What is up? Welcome in to the Brave in the Attempt podcast. I'm your host, Wyatt Spaulding, special mic athlete and health messenger. And I'm joined today by my twin brother, Weston Spaulding. Today, we are starting a new little series here about health, healthy tips, activities, stuff you should do to help you become a better athlete on the field. And it will just help you off the field in your personal life as well if you want to stay healthy in sports and everyday life. And today, Wes will be sharing his expertise on health because he has studied health through college and after college. And I will give my thoughts on just what it's like being an athlete and in and out of Special Olympics. How's it going, Wes? It's going good. I'm happy to be on. Yeah. Glad to start this little mini series with you. So our first topic we are going to talk about, which is very important in whether you want to get in shape or just athletics in general, is running. Running is very important because if you don't run, you probably will get benched. Basketball, soccer, uh, track and field, is anything. You do. You got to run to get in shape. How can you get in shape without running? So Exactly. I feel like you always uh, enjoyed this more than me when we were kids, Wyatt. I don't know. I was weird, though. Like, I was very intense about it. Like, I would, like, if I didn't meet a certain amount of hours, so, like, for my workout that day, so, like, six or seven, I was like, mm-hmm. I gotta go run. I hate it, but I'm going to go run. And it's like, yeah. I don't really need to, but I guess I'm going to do it. So. I remember you come home, you'd be like, yeah, I only practice basketball for an hour, tennis for an hour, so I think I'm going to go do a 45 minute run or 30 minute run. And I'll just be like, this dude is a psychopath. (laughs) Yeah. And then I guess I do like, you got to think like, I don't know, I guess the sports I played like basketball. I mean, you're out there like back then, like we played traditional. So you never really took me out. Like I didn't Mm. have the ball. I was playing all game tennis. You're out there for who knows how long. Most Mm. of it was like tennis outside of special Olympics. So like yeah, you kind of had to run, but yeah, we kind of talked about too how you'd always get sick and then just have to constantly get back in shape. So when you were working out, it's like you were trying to make up for the weeks that you were sick. You're exactly. like, well, maybe you can just put in more hours, which to some extent can get you in shape a little faster. Um, you know, do that for too long can burn out a little bit. But you were you're good about kind of knowing like if I just kind of break through that wall of being out of shape until I'm in shape, then I can dial it back a little bit. Yeah. And it's not going to come back too hard and then get sick again. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I would definitely try to like be in the best shape. And I mean, it helped me because like, I think I was rated, they like rated us in special Olympics one time for like Mm -hmm. some video that Corey, uh, my coach did. And I was like a seven or eight or something in passing my shooting was like a three or a four, but mm-hmm. my it might have been conditioning or something. My mobility was like pretty high because I could get up and down the court. And what I would do is I would like push the ball and everybody would be dra- like jogging back, especially mm-hmm. like in middle school and high school when we played traditional. And then that mm-hmm. would just help me either make a layup or get it to the post. So. Yeah. Remember when I coached um, our like – what do you call it when it's not all unified? Traditional oh, tra- team? Traditional, yeah. yeah. Traditional. Yeah, you know, when I was coaching the traditional team, I would just tell certain guys, like, just run to the block. Just run to the block. And then I would tell you, okay, these guys will be doing this. Just keep pushing the ball every time. Because I was like, even if our guys were out of shape, I was like, well, why it's in more in shape than most, almost everybody on the court. Maybe, like, somebody on their team was a little in shape. I keep up with you. But you had the basketball IQ to – complement your conditioning and um then it's like as guys got tired we got easy layups and i'd be yelling at our guys like go to the block go to the block be like half court and they're like tired but that was nice because we had enough subs too i got like sub guys in and out a little quicker um we kind of like would sub at the half of the quarter and we would just leave you in and uh remember like kenny was my assistant and we'd be like you good you good you good can you you good because like we were like we need a point guard and we don't really have a, another point guard so uh you're just gonna yeah. play the whole game I think you kind of knew that too. You knew like, if I can last the whole game, like they won't take me out and it doesn't matter what level it is, special Olympics, high school, college, pro, 
if your conditioning is top tier, uh, like there, your coach is going to like play you as, as long as you can, as long as you're making smart decisions. And when you are in shape, you end up making better decisions because you're not tired. And when we get tired, we make worse decisions because our body just is like drained. Yeah. And like, let's go outside of special Olympics a little bit. Like when you played, you played mm -hmm. high school and college, like mm -hmm. you kept the best players in, but the best players also didn't they put in a lot of work, which involved running, especially in basketball? Yeah, I would say it was more like guys played a lot. So guys were in basketball shape because they played a lot of basketball. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I would do to get in shape is I would just go play a lot of games, try to play a lot of pickup games. There was always noon ball or, you know, we get some guys after school and go play. And, you know, you and me, we used to – sometimes do the the 5 30 a.m shoot arounds we do some conditioning after we always try to like finish the shooting session with a little bit of conditioning or i used to go on like longer runs you know like i tried to do two or three miles and i think my goal for for two miles was i know in college i was trying to get like 12 minutes under 12 minutes for two miles about a six minute mile and high school i don't know i feel like i just played so much basketball in high school i was just like well i'm just gonna get in shape um, from that yeah how did that because you weren't really on you know teams like I was so what were some running drills you were more the drill guy I I didn't really like the drills as much I wasn't as disciplined but what were some drills you did to get yourself in shape for like basketball or tennis or football so you know especially like you only practice like once a week but mm -hmm. if you really look at the like the, now there's an elite division for tennis bowling uh, we have a soccer team that in Omaha, and uh, they travel and play other soccer teams. And so it's like you got to practice outside of practice. And so I would just like, honestly, I'd copy your guys' drills and mm -hmm. look them up. So, like, speed dribbling, like, you stop, dribble in place, dribble again. Or, like, you remember nine and ones? Like, uh, let's go back speed dribbling. Like, you start the baseline, go to the free throw line? Or yeah, it's mean? like you'd run lines. Or I well I'd run lines, but then like I ran like you'd have to touch the baseline like nine times. So the baseline on the other opposite end is one. Run back to where you started. The other baseline that's two. And you had to get, do it like nine times under a minute or something like that. Um, oh yeah, like for a nine and one. Like you yeah, got to yeah. touch. Like yeah, nine touch, times. Yeah, touch the line nine times. So I would do like four to six of those, and it was really hard. And then you you I think you would tell me like. You're jogging it. And it's like, yeah, because I've done three already. And <laughs> um yeah, yeah. But what I learned is like when uh you kind of had someone do it with you, you ran faster. Mm -hmm. Like I remember my friend Marcus in college who played for Midland basketball, he was like encouraging me and yelling at me when I was running and I ran my fastest time. And yeah. I didn't break a minute, but I was like one ten or something. And nice. so that's what I would do is running like lines and stuff. And you got to do like your conditioning that you do in practice. Like, so if you do soccer, uh, maybe it's you, there's lines in soccer you do. You run up and down the soccer field or maybe just dribbling from goal to goal with the soccer ball. I mean, the kind of good thing about not having goalie, I think is like, you have to go inside the goal and then get the ball. So then you could start inside the goal even and dribble all the way to the other end shoot it and then keep jogging after you shoot it and then go in the goal and then get the soccer ball and dribble back out. Like that would be really hard because the soccer yeah. ball is like way bigger than a basketball court. Um, yeah. And, and soccer and basketball, you can kind of do conditioning with the ball. Cause you said you did some speed dribbling. Was that yeah. you go to like free throw back or would you like stop at the free throw line dribble for a little bit and then sprint to the half court and dribble a little bit or yeah. what was your speed dribbling drill? So like, yeah, I'd like stop at the free throw line Drill in place, put my right hand out, protect the ball, then like explode, go to half court, do the same thing, stop, protect the ball, dribble the ball really low. Mm -hmm. And there's probably like some really advanced soccer drills you could do, people that are good at soccer. I could do that. Or just the basics like I do. I mean, I just practice all my dribbling. Mm -hmm. I'm not very good at soccer and just started. But, um, yeah. or like if you play, let's, well, this is a good one for both for special mix and then just, like rec leagues, like you would play in, like softball, run around the field. Like 
you know, remember in baseball, we'd always like run, you'd have to run around either the base path or the entire field. You'd run to the goalpost around mm-hmm. the fence and then all the way back to home plate, even like do that. Or, um, if you like go to the batting cage and you strike out or something, maybe you have to go jog a certain distance or something. You can yeah. always incorporate or, uh, into your workouts. We, are, we think there are some ideas for for athletes that are at home and maybe can't get to a field or get to a court. If you can't get to like a court or a field, I guess it depends. If you live in a house and you got a driveway, you know, you could run lines like touch – touch this crack, run back, touch the other crack, run back. Or you could just start at the beginning of your driveway, run to the end of your driveway, touch the line, run back, do that several times for sprinting. Cause mm-hmm. um, like a lot of like, you know, track and uh, basketball it is a lot of sprinting. It's not like every sport, it's not like cross country. Mm-hmm. We don't even have cross country, but you know, yeah. it's not all long distance running or just run around. Like what I would do is just run around my block. And you would jog, I'd jog like a little bit. When I came back from my back surgery in 14, I couldn't really run, run, but I did do like light jogging. So if you haven't really ran in a while, like just lightly jog and then start on that, work through a pace where it's like, I don't know, like medium jog, but close to a run. Then as you get better, and maybe next week or next couple of days, you're in better shape and you can start a run and some of this could be like in a couple of days or could be like you jog one week then you medium the next week then by the third week or fourth week you are actually like running running so yeah and to make it fun kind of- but like you can listen to music if you got like some kind of music download app and you could do that yeah music's a great way to make running uh and getting in shape a little more enjoyable you said uh like a medium pace is good to start off with. And yeah, you're, you're right on the money with that. It's you want to start off with a, like a talking pace. When you're jogging, you should be able to talk if somebody was next to you. And that might be a walk. You might start at the walk. And we've even talked about before, you know, you've been getting back in shape and even after some of your uh, like surgeries, I was like, well, you can jog or fast walk for a minute. And then rest for a minute or rest for two minutes and then do that again. So jog or fast walk for a minute, slow walk for one to two minutes. And then as you get more in shape, kind of like you were talking about, like, you know, uh, a couple of weeks, you're running medium pace, then you're a little faster, a little faster. Same thing with these breaks. Like you could run for or jog for a minute, rest for two minutes for two weeks. And then the next two weeks, you're, you're jogging for a minute and a half and you're still resting for two minutes and then you're jogging for two minutes and still resting for two minutes and jogging for three minutes. And like, there's lots of ways that you can increase your capacity with running and, um, or just like how much you run. Yeah. And, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. You, you know, I was gonna say, do you have anything to like add with that? Have you had any running workouts that you've done before? What are some driveway ones? Cause I feel like you're a big, big driveway, like workout guy. Yeah. So like what I would do is like, i will kind of just do sprints. And like start like I said, start at the beginning of the driveway and then go down. Sometimes honestly, if you're like on a hill and you mm-hmm. have to like grunt up your driveway and it's kinda of hard, it'll actually like it will make your legs stronger. And then when you run on flat surfaces, you'll be that much better. But I'd run like like probably do like I mean five to ten sprints down and back the driveway. Or you do like you want to look work on like lateral movement for defense and soccer or basketball, then um, uh, you just like maybe set a cone up on, let's say by the garage and then another cone kind of by your grass. And then you start in the middle and you run to the cone on the grass, touch it, run to the cone by the garage, touch it, and then run through when you like the middle of where the gra- like where the grass is, like towards the grass one. I probably didn't explain mm-hmm. that bit, but like, you're just gonna have to do some uh, YouTube videos. Life yeah. of White's on the YouTube channel. Check it out. Lots of drills. Lots, yeah. lots of tips. Oh yeah, I definitely. I got some drills on there that does do conditioning. I could post more too, especially mm-hmm. now that we're starting this series. And um, uh, if you want to like, like even like make your legs stronger, um, I built, 
I built uh, like a sled at home just out of like a like a box that you would put gardening stuff in. And then I had dad like put this hook on it. And then I just kind of created that and put like a couple weights in there and pulled the box. So there's nice. all kind of stuff like that. Cause like running does make your legs stronger and like any sport, like it doesn't matter if it's special, special Olympics, what I play in or rec sports that Weston's plays in. It's like, you need your legs to be strong. Like mm -hmm. you won't survive in like sports in general. If your legs are pretty weak, like, yeah, everyone's big on the upper body, but like, in, like in basketball, you know, it's all starts from the legs. You think it starts from the arms, but it doesn't. You gotta like generate power through your legs first so you can go up for the jump shot. Soccer, obviously, you need your legs to be strong. If your legs aren't strong, you're probably not gonna be the best soccer player. So, yeah. Um, like other sports, track and field is big in Special Olympics, I know. So obviously, you wanna be good at that. And we have like, you know, walking and especially as well but like even like if you speed walk to start let's say you're like you really it's physically hard to run like maybe just walk a little faster like just like don't walk at the pace you would walk from like your couch to your kitchen or in the office when you get up from your desk when you go to work out and you're going for a walk walk faster like mm -hmm. just start with a speed walk or something and yeah yeah because like do you know people that like just from your line of work, they're like they're like, oh, I haven't ran forever. I just like to go on walks. Oh yeah, and I usually that's the first thing I do with a lot of even the clients I coach is try to get their steps up, trying to get them to walk more throughout the day. Uh, usually, like on your phone, you'll have that little health app. It's like a little heart. It comes with the iPhone if you have an iPhone, mm -hmm. and um, it connects to like my coaching app, so I can see all their steps. And guys usually have their phone on them. So guys' steps are pretty accurate, but girls sometimes put in their purse, so it's not as accurate. But um, if you do go into that little health app, your steps number should be right there. And a lot of people only getting about 3,000, 4,000 steps a day, which is pretty low. We want to try to get at least to seven to 8,000 steps a day. Now, if you get like 10,000 plus, that's great. Um, but bare minimum, try to get like seven to 8,000 steps and sometimes the best way to do that is first thing in the morning, you get up, uh, just go for like a walk around the block, helps you wake up, get you some sunlight, which sunlight gives you this um, good nutrient called vitamin D, which is uh, from the sun. It's the best source of vitamin D is sunlight. And it can just kind of make your day better. Uh, there's a lot of good benefits to exercise. And one of it just makes you in a better mood. So if uh, people who you live with, think you're uh, kind of cranky maybe you need to go for more walks and get out to the sun more um and i kind of wanted to backtrack uh because you said some good things like one you have a sled which is like amazing sleds are uh great to have because they're low impact on your body but they build a lot of strength and you can do it every day actually like mm -hmm. you probably can do a barbell squat every day unless you're recovering really well or going really light some days but you could actually do sled pushes every day uh the way your body responds to it is better, but you know, not, not everybody has, has a sled. And then you were talking about driveway stuff. And then I just kind of remembered things we did at home when we were kids was when it was like just bad weather outside, we used to do like stair workouts. Like we would just yes. like running up and down the stairs, which uh, sometimes is harder than running because like, you know, you're at the incline and it's more of an ex explosive movement every step instead of a steady like pace. So that's something too. Like you could set a timer on your phone, see how many times you go up down the stairs in like five minutes. And then next week, see how many times you go up down the stairs in six minutes and you just keep increasing the time that you're going up down the stairs. And then when you get in your game, it's going to be all flat. And you're like, this cake. Like as long as yeah. I don't have to do stairs, I'm good. Exactly. Or like, uh, what's it called? Like burpees where you like jump up and then go down and do like a push up area. Kind of. Like yeah. There's that. Like you could do that. Or and you could run in place, like you can do that, like do high knees or something, and really mm -hmm. you can do a lot to get your heart moving. Or um, uh, I'm trying to think what else we did. Um, I mean, if you if you have like say if you live in an apartment, and you have a workout space. Obviously, that's really beneficial because uh, then you could go on the treadmill. Or if you don't like going on the treadmill, 
all the time. You could maybe drive the bike and drive the pedal really hard on a bike. And if you have a bike, bike rides are fine too. You could run one day and then bike the next day. Either way, mm -hmm. your legs will be strong. And I mean, it is good for people in special links and people that are in special links that do just wreck stuff or need to work out. Like, I mean, working out basically is for your health. Like for me, if I didn't work out, I'd probably be super tight and not very comfortable. And I'm already not very comfortable sometimes because I have cerebral palsy and I don't even have it like as bad as some other people that have cerebral palsy, but still like I endure the pain of it. Like if you don't work out, Wes, do you feel, can you feel it? Oh yeah. yeah. I uh, have even felt it lately. Like I haven't been like stretching as much as I used to. And I was running a lot beginning the summer for a race and then I kind of backed off and I can definitely tell like when I'm tight and sometimes when we maybe are like sore from workout or maybe your job makes you sore. We're like, ah, you know, I, I shouldn't go like work out. I shouldn't go run because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling tired. I'm not feeling the best. But like you said, you feel better when you move. If you only move, your blood's flowing. So now all of a sudden you're pushing all that soreness basically out of those sore spots and that you're getting new blood into wherever it's sore. So let's say, you know, it might be tight up in here by your neck. A lot of us are hunched over throughout the day. Um, and sometimes like going lifting weights or even like running. I've like noticed like even running, just like kind of pumping my arms can sometimes loosen up my traps a little bit. That just kind of shows how, how tight I can get at times. Um, and nothing like UI with uh, cerebral palsy because you won't work out for one day and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so tight. And I'm like, well, you need to go walk or something. Go do something like minimal. Like walking is great for loosening up. Even before this, I was feeling a little tight. Uh, just kind of walked, shot hoops a little bit, did a little stretching, and that just kind of sharpened my mind again uh, before we hopped on here and made me feel better, like mentally and physically. So I feel like we should all move every day. Now we're not all great at it. Like we always put – other things out of it at times when we shouldn't uh but just being a little bit better and sometimes it's not going to be better than yesterday because you might be sick or might just have a different schedule or you know sometimes we just have bad days like we just like i'm just gonna say it, we just kind of like suck like sometimes you just have good days that suck you know, like oh, i could have been better today and then but you're like well at least i did something like it wasn't a zero and it wasn't nothing i did a little bit of something i did one exercise i did one walk around the block, I ran for at least five minutes and that's gonna be better than um doing nothing for sure. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. like you said, like you gotta know your body, you know, mm -hmm. for if you have a disability and you're like, oh, or you got some medical thing going on, like, you know, don't overdo it and make things worse, which I've yeah. which I've done before. And so don't do that, but you know, you can't just like use it as an excuse either, like you weren't or I got this medical thing or I'm, you know, I have a disability. Like that's not really an excuse. Like you could do something. Another mm -hmm. thing I thought back to the homework out just real quick, you could do jumping jacks. Like, yeah, that's We're a big thing. Rope. Yeah. Like that's a big thing. And like the fitness challenge we do in the wintertime, especially it's like jumping jacks is like one of the challenges. And like, you could try to do 20 one day, 30 the next and 40. Like you, you just, like you said, movement, and get you in shape and mm -hmm. you're gonna like don't if you don't do it then don't complain that you're not in shape when the state games come or that you're tired within the first five to three minutes of the game it's like well did you work out outside of practice like that's yeah. the hard part it's like you know sports is sports whether it's you're playing in college or high school and now you know rec leagues that travel or i'm playing special Olympics. Sports are sports, and the ones that are in shape are mostly the ones that are going to play good for the team or that get to play the most because mm -hmm. they're just ready. They were um, – what was that saying? Like, don't come ready, be ready. Like, yeah. you got to be ready for when the coach calls your name to go in the game. And if you're eating, eating crappy or you're just, like, not moving around, like, if you're just going to practice, like – once a week for when practice is scheduled, you're not going to be like in shape for when state games come. So you mm -hmm. got to get in shape 
or even like your rec leagues, like don't just work out when your rec league is. <laughs> don't you want to be the best in your rec league? Like say, yeah. oh, that guy's good. And so go shoot baskets in your driveway or at a gym when a couple of days before your rec league and do some actual basketball workouts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and kind of, I mean, you kind of said the definition of this, but I feel like when we were growing up and even now it's always how, how good could I possibly be? Yeah. You know, I'm going to do my best to get playing time or be in shape and be ready for the sporting event league or event. Um, but it's like, at the end of the day, after it's all over, don't you want to say like, man, I really gave my all towards that goal. And I really got to see what I was made of and what I could do instead of I feel like sometimes we're afraid of that we're afraid of putting it all in, putting in the effort and then maybe knocking the result we want. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like we all had that experience and it hurts and you and me talk about it all the time. It's like, well, if you just don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll eventually get the result. So, you know, if you wanted to run a mile in a month and you aren't able to do it in a month and then you give up, you're like, ah, I wasn't able to run a mile in a month. It's like, well, you got to be close if you're running for a month. Like if you just keep going, maybe you got a month and a half or a month and a day. Maybe it was the next day you, you felt better and just got it, you know, or maybe it's going to be longer. It might be take you three months to be able to run a mile. And so you just keep consistently doing what you're doing, uh, you're going to get there. And I mean, I preach that to all my clients in different forms. Like, Hey, just stay consistent. Consistency is the key. Like you're setting the foundation, set this big foundation so That way you can climb higher to the top. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just gotta be willing to like, want to do it. Like I said, and mm-hmm. you know, I think, from the special link standpoint, it's becoming more like like it's still inclusive, everybody's included, but now there are the teams or tournaments where it's like you like where you tried out for summer basketball and then now there's like we partner with Union Omaha Union Omaha, the minor league soccer team, and they have a unified soccer team. And all those athletes had to train for the tryout. Cause mm-hmm. and not and so it's like if you want to make the team, you gotta be prepared like in the tryouts in like April or May. So you gotta be working in January, February, and even December if you wanna make the team. So mm-hmm. cause like you talked about, um that summer basketball trial was really hard, wasn't it? Oh yeah. So going into my junior year, we had uh the summer team I was trying out for and it was uh, a three hour tryout and we were just running like the first hour of all these practices too, where you just start running up and down the court. They would just try to condition us. And I was not physically ready or mentally ready for this tryout. And I barely made the second team. There was only two teams uh, and I barely, barely made the second team. And uh that whole summer I just kind of worked on getting in shape. And then the next summer I came and tried it out for the team again. I knew how demanding the practices were. I knew how demanding the trial was going to be. So uh, I just put an extra work that it sucked. Like, cause I was by myself is after basketball season. So nobody else is uh, really playing basketball anymore. They're playing their spring sports. And I would just get on a treadmill or do drills and practice the conditioning drill. And I knew that were coming up. So I'd be ready. And I was one of the better players and one of the more in shape players. And um, that was a cool part. Like talking about how I put in a lot of effort and at times I didn't want to, but I was glad I did because then I got the benefits of uh, just showcasing my skills more because I was in shape. I was in shape Then I'm more worried about keeping up with everybody else. When I am in shape, it's all I can focus more on these this move I've been working on or I can focus more on getting my teammates open or getting myself open for a shot because I don't have to worry about my conditioning anymore it's good it's like solid it's not going anywhere yeah for sure Mm -hmm. so that's just some uh tips and advice we have on like running and just getting in shape for your sport activities and if you want to be ready for your state tournaments or the special games or you want to play rec league or make your high school or college team you gotta run man you gotta run that's what sports is it's running like almost in every sport so 
Any uh, last advice, Wes? Nope. Just got to run, like you said. Got to run, people. Got to do it. Well, thanks for joining us on the Bravery in the Attempt podcast. Um, we'll be doing, like I said, a series with this and be telling you more healthy advice on how you could become a better athlete and just healthier overall in your everyday life. See you.